I think, you know, like me, many of you in the room are probably constantly in airports, right? You know, trying to find the best restaurant, the fastest path to the taxi line at O'Hare, where the American Airlines is, in lounges in LAX. You probably know it all by heart. You have a million apps, you know where to go, you kind of live and breathe, you know, the airports. And for a long time, I think for many of us, myself included, being on a flight was almost like a sense of, of, of refuge, a sense of calm. You could actually do some reading, and not just you know, a legal document or you know, a confidential information memorandum, but actual read a book. Um, those of you in the audience who have small children like I do, you can actually get some sleep. It's probably the best sleep you've had all week. But that's really changed. Um, and I think all of you use the products that we're about to talk about, the in-flight entertainment and connectivity. You know, no longer are we just you know, kind of passive, passive passengers looking at these small screens 13 inches wide uh, and being forced to watch the same you know, programming on you know, NBC or CBS and you know, the movie du jour. Maybe we are all more connected than ever, although one could argue about the last point on the right. But really, you know, why, why am I here today? You know, why do companies care? Why do people like me, an investment bank or a merchant banker, care? Why do investors care about in-flight entertainment and connectivity? Well, it really starts with some very big numbers and, and the promise here. In-flight connectivity now is being influenced by many factors. You know, we have about 12 devices each. There's the gate-to-gate -gate aspect. You can now have your device on you at all times. You don't have to put it away for takeoff. You don't have to put it away for landing. These are things we all know. The penetration is, in, is, is, is growing rapidly. And we're seeing it by the day. New, con new contract wins by enormous multinational corporations. Companies that just focus on satellite broadband, companies that just focus on in-flight broadband, and companies that focus just on in-flight broadband and, con and, and entertainment. But it's the 5% number, I think, that also gets, grabs a lot of people's attention. Think about the enormous possibilities, and this is where satellite really plays into it. You know, no longer do you have to worry about, you know, how are they going to actually have the internet on a flight from New York to London? Well, you can't put buoys on the water to go, you know, to have, and, and, and have towers on the buoys to, to have connectivity. You need satellite capacity. And think about how many announcements that you've seen in recent months and recent quarters from some very big airlines, from some very prominent companies about this in particular topic. The other thing, fuel costs. Now, that's lowered in recent months because of you know, the oil prices have gone, but think about how much money the airlines have made from a you know, nickeling and diming you, or $25 or $50 dollaring you, if you will, a bag of peanuts, a beer, putting, you know, you're checking in your bag, putting your bag overhead, the list kind of goes on. This is getting more and more important. And investors are really trying to figure out, why is this important, or should I care? Is it just a niche? You know, for years, people have been focusing on growth, we'll call it growth telecom. So 10, 12 years ago, it was about wireless towers. And it still is. They're growing very rapidly, but the growth has slowed. And then it became data centers. Then it became machine to machine, M2M, Internet of Things, IoT. But what exactly is that? I think people are starting to still, still trying to figure that out. Satellite has an enormous part to play there. But in-flight broadband is something that people have been looking at more and more. And what we've seen is things have moved typically in concert with one another. So you have these large multinational corporations, you have these companies that I mentioned that are specifically about in-flight broadband and entertainment. And when good news happens, all the stocks move up. When bad news happens, they all move down. Some examples, and this is historical, and I'll get to the reason why I'm going to say it changed recently. The EU, you're talking about Greece. Bad news, the, the certain airlines, big crashes, you know, lost planes, they all go down. The announcement of, and this is where it gets interesting, a U.S. broadcaster or a series of broadcasters announcing over-the-top or out-of-home content being available to people without a cable subscription or wireline subscription, but with a broadband or wireless connection. That gets people excited, and then they're saying, you know what, you can do this, you can have content out of the home. I think the in-flight you know, stock should go up too, because people, it's just this whole ecosystem about broadband and content. So you see that. The, the people, people start correlating you know, the secondary and even tertiary you know, way of thinking. This is the day one could argue that it all changed for investors. And some of you in this room know these th there are three companies on here. I'd, I've been asked not to, not, to, not, to, not to say who they are or who they are, but you can probably figure out who they are. We'll call it A, B, and C. 
And the reason why, why it may be considered a watershed day for many people is this was a day when the market really looked and said, they're all doing different things. And, and they all have different aspects of the connectivity and content perspective. And I'll, I'll start with why. The long and short of it is there was a, a very large US airline that announced that about one quarter of its broadband equipped flights was going to be under review from a technological perspective, meaning that the incumbent provider had a certain number of time, called 45 days, to look into possibly changing the technology, meaning there may be a superior choice out there. The market saw that and saw that announcement and reacted that day, which was a Tuesday, by taking that stock and, and actually having it go down as much as 42% during the day, ultimately closing down 27%. The same investor said, we think it's going to go to company B. They have an existing satellite connectivity pr uh, product. It seems to get really good customer rev reviews. Airlines are caring more and more about this when you talk about highly competitive routes, New York to Florida, Dallas to Los Angeles, these routes that have a lot of choices. Broadband is becoming more important. And this, this company may be the one that likely takes it. The third one, and this is the one that interests me the most actually in many ways, has connectivity, satellite connectivity, I should say. The first one is terrestrial, the second is connectivity, the third is a satellite as well, but also a huge content piece. They provide the encoding, the formatting, and so forth. And it was about flat, you know, call it down 2%. But the, the reason why that one did not necessarily go down, people thinking that the one, you know, we'll call it company B in the middle, was because people and investors have really figured this out. They're really doing their work. They're saying, how can you line fit an airplane? Does company A, B, or C, do they fit on a 737? Do they fit on a 777? How are you going to be able to change out the, the, these old planes? Is it going to take two weeks? Is it going to take three weeks? Are they going to play nice with one another when they have to switch, switch or if they do? People are really focusing on this. And the, you know, the research community you see, there's dozens of analysts covering this now. It's a sector that is much larger than machine to machine and internet of things when you look at it from a pure play perspective and from a market cap perspective. It's multiples bigger. So look, the jury's still out, I think, when it's, you know, is it a niche? Probably not anymore. Is it an enormous industry? Probably not. But is it going to be a growth driver for, for satellite? Absolutely. Is it going to be a part of our everyday lives? Absolutely. So I'll leave, that, I'll, I'll leave all those thoughts with you. I appreciate your time today. If anybody sees me around the conference, I'm happy to talk, and thank you for your time.